Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the insane performance improvements coming to Link in .NET 7, specifically around some of the methods. And it's very interesting because it is not your typical, oh we kinda made it a bit faster, it's not twice as fast, 5 times as fast or 10 times as fast, it is actually up to 45 times as fast. This is not performance improvement that you see every day, and it's actually nothing that you can achieve with the code you will manually write instead of link. And we're going to see exactly how they achieved it and which methods are affected. It is very, very interesting, and I think that's where .NET will go moving forward. If you like that content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and for more training, check out nickchapsters.com. And speaking of that, I want to let you know that I just launched my back to school sale at nickchapsters.com. So the first 100 of you who use discount code SCHOOL2022 can get a 20% off any of my courses or any of my already discounted bundles. There's only a few codes left, so don't miss this opportunity. Now back to the video. All right, so let me show you what I have here. So I have a simple console application here that just targets .NET 7, and I have the .NET 7 RC1 installed on my PC, and that's what I'm going to be using. And what I want to show you first is the methods that got the special treatment. So I'm just going to make uh, an enumerable, and in fact, we're going to make that an array with some items, and I'm going to say enumerable.range, uh, starting from 1, give me 100, and then to array it. And the methods who got the special treatment are, first, max, so item dot max var min equals item dot min so obviously the first one gives us the max integer in this case in the array and the min the minimum then the average is another one and also the sum so item dot sum now personally i've been using max min and sum quite a bit average isn't that common in my use cases but i can see how many people might be using that now Historically, Link gets bad reputation because historically it allocates memory, it is slow, and even the official Microsoft documentation used to say that you shouldn't be using it in hot paths where performance actually matters. And that is certainly still true. They don't really use it for the things that really matter when it comes to performance. Link usage in general in hot paths is something that could get your PR rejected in places I've worked in the past. So generally people would just hand roll their own solution. And this is true for these things as well, because at the end of the day, they are link methods. Now what I want to do is get a baseline feel for how this used to perform in .NET 6 and before that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this project to .NET 6 and then I'm going to add benchmark.net and I'm going to run some benchmarks to see where we are. What's my baseline, basically? So we're going to do that and create a simple benchmarks class and I'm going to add a memory diagnoser here because I want to know how memory is affected as well from one .NET version to the other. And this is basically the setup I want for my test. So I have a size here which is defined as 100 and then I have my I enumerable items and I do enumerate them as an array here. We're going to talk about why that is interesting later. And then my benchmarks would look something like this. So min, max, average and sum. So we're going to configure that as a release project. I'm going to go to program.cs and I'm going to say benchmark runner dot run and I'm going to specify by benchmarks class. And that's it. And now I'm going to run this benchmark in .NET 6 to see exactly where we stand with performance and memory allocations and speed. All right, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see, min, max, average and sum, they all kind of perform around the 300 nanoseconds um, area. And then we have 32 bytes of allocated memory. Now, what you might be tempted to do, and I can totally understand why you would do so, is say, okay, link sucks, so why don't I just roll my own method to do that type of work, right? So you could, if you wanted to, do something like this to get the max item in an array, for example. And this maybe will be more efficient than what we have with link. Just to test that, I'm going to comment out all the other benchmarks. And I'm going to run this benchmark here. And we're going to see how it compares with the link version. So the one we hand rolled. All right, so results are back. And as you can see, the link version, 327 nanoseconds. My own version, 291. A bit faster, but the same memory allocated. So it doesn't really matter. Now, what I want to do is comment that hand rolled version out and uncomment all the previous ones. 
And what I'm going to do is change this benchmark to run against .NET 6 and .NET 7 in the same execution. And I want to compare how performance changed between .NET 6 and .NET 7. Now to do that, and that actually might be a good lesson for you as well, if you want to get into multi-targeting and multi-targets performance testing or micro benchmarking. So I can change this framework to frameworks and I can use this now to say that this project targets both .NET 6 and .NET 7. And if you have a framework specific code, you can even have if clauses and say if .NET 6, then do something, and otherwise, if, I don't know, .NET 7, do something else. This is actually a very common technique that libraries and NuGet packages use because they have to target all these different versions where some methods might not be available. So now that I have that, what I need to do to actually execute towards both is say, simple job, and I can specify the runtime. So in my case, I want net 7 and I also want net 6 so dot net 6 and dot net 7 and I could even set a baseline and say that my baseline is this but I don't want to pollute the results with columns that are a bit distracting so this is enough for what I want to do now this class will run four benchmarks per runtime so eight results in the end so let's go ahead and run that and see how dot net 6 performance and dot net 7 performance for the exact same code compares. All right, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So these are the .NET 6 numbers and these are the .NET 7 numbers. Now, a few very interesting things. First, the new ones, the .NET 7 ones, are incredibly fast. 9 nanoseconds from 317. 8 from 300 basically. 13 and 27 for average and sum. That is nuts. This is not performance you'd expect. And also, zero memory allocations. Huh? How? Well, I'll show you how, but before you start saying, oh, this is because you're using an array and I might be using a list, I'm going to run the same results with a two list here instead of a two array just to see where we are. And I have to wait three minutes per execution. So, uh, this is a bit boring for me, but for you it's just... So results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see, and you should know this, that generally using lists and operating on lists is usually slower and it's also a bit less memory efficient. So as you can see from 32 bytes to 40 bytes, and then this is 485 from 315. So as you can see, the performance benefits of .NET 7, both in speed and allocate memory are still here and these methods still perform as if this was an array while these are slower and were slow and this is actually where the 48 times faster claim comes from because well it is but how because if i uncomment my own max version and i run it this is still 300 nanoseconds meaning that if i chose to wrote my own max method to be faster and I upgraded .NET 7, well, my code would be slower than what Link could provide, which is interesting because we know that we shouldn't be using Link. So uh, what do you do? Well, enough with that. Let's see how they managed to do this. I'm going to go to min, but both min and max and average and sum, they all have the same technique. If I go to the .NET 6 version, as you can see, pretty straightforward iNumerable comes in, we get the enumerator, we use the move next method, and then we check the value. And if the current value is smaller than the previous value that we had, then we set that and it goes on and eventually we get the minimum. But if I go back here and I say, okay, give me the .NET 7 version to see how that works, then it's a bit different. Well, actually it's completely different. So now min knows that this is an integer and it targets the min integer method. And this method is weird. So it doesn't look anything like what we had before. Let's start with that. And as you can see, the first thing we're trying to do is get the source, the enumerable, and try to get a span out of it, a read-only span. And if we can, this is where we are in luck. Because if we cannot do that, then as you can see, it falls back to the previous way of doing things. But in our case, we can, both with a list and the array. So we're going to go here and what this is going to do is vectorize the search if possible. Now, if you're not familiar with the vector class or vector 128 or vector 256, then 
if you really want to get to know that, there's no, in my opinion, easy way to explain this. I'm going to link Stephen's blog in the description if you want to read more because they did a lot of work with factorization to improve performance in .NET 7. So I'm going to put that there in case you want to read more about that. But you should know that it's trying to see if it can vectorize the search and to deem that it checks whether this is a hardware accelerated. Now, if you go in here and you see what this returns, you see false, but you see this intrinsic um, attribute here. This means that basically the value of this thing is actually set by the JIT and this happens uh, here if we are in release mode and I think we also have to be in x64 for this to actually be turned on but if it is even if it says false here in runtime it will be turned into true and it will work absolutely optimized and then it needs to be at least two vectors long to be able to operate on it but if it does then it uses vectors and it works with a span to be as efficient as possible and this is basically how we get this insane performance now again if you want to know all about that we're going to put the link in the description check it out it's a very lengthy post but if you're an absolute nerd when it comes to performance then you're gonna absolutely love it well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.